right? So I don't normally make two videos in a day. This is very early morning, but I just have to. Twitter yesterday exploded after the Tour de France stage. Obviously, it's a very exciting stage. I think it was stage eight, um, and stage nine, sorry. Uh, and, you know, obviously, a super exciting stage for many reasons. But one of them was Tade Pagacha. Now, you can see Mihai, follow him on Twitter. He knows everything about cycling uh, a lot more than myself. He did the calculations, 6.8 watts per kilo. What? Like 24 minutes of 6.8. So everyone was like, right, right, right. Pagacha uploads his power data. Pagacha uploads his power data. Let's have a look. So here we have it. This is the point where he said he did 6.8. He did 6.5 watts per kilo. But so that doesn't sound as impressive, but we're going to go through the ride as we always do. Uh, so 334 normalized um, for four hours is pretty solid. He weighs 66 kilos. I think that's correct. Seems to be roughly right. Um, four and a half thousand calories burnt. Big day out for the, for the young lad. Um, he is obviously a Tour de France debut. So go to the beginning of the stage. Pretty chill. 220 normalized. I think any of you could get around that who's watching my channel. Um, that's very chill pace. Um, first climb of the day, the Col de Mont. Uh, 8% ridden at 5.6 watts per kilo, which is which is a strong pace for sure. Like that's harder than they normally go. Normally, first mountain top stage first mountain in a mountain stage would be like 5, 5.2. That's solid. I don't think many of my viewers are getting around that. Um, definitely not me at the moment. Um, anyway, so then descend uh, port, um, towards Port de Bals. Um, so Port de Bals is a long climb, chain gate with Contador attacking, Schleck happened there. Uh, it's slightly shallower gradient, 6% here. Um, again, 5.8 watts per kilo, 47 minutes. That's a hard day out. That's not them noodling at 200 watts and then razzing it up the parachute that's them properly doing a high tempo obviously sub threshold still because their thresholds are stupid but it's still very very high vam is close to 1500 or 1450 that is very high riding 24 can out six percent for 47 minutes is very impressive um normalizes the slightly higher just just the, the peaks and stuff 390 which is closer to six watts per kilo for this lad so that's again very impressive Descend into Port de Bales, and then here we go. This is where we're going to do a lot of analysis. So, Mihai said 6.8, and you might say, oh, well, he's wrong, he's wrong, he's wrong. But that is judging that the Garrido was on the front the whole time. So, if we look at the first part of the climb, he did 410 watts, um, which was 24k an hour and 7%, which is very, very quick. And just to note, there was a slight tailwind. But I don't think it really was a proper tailwind. Like, it wasn't blowing a hurricane. This was genuinely just an unbelievable stage. Um, so, yeah, the first part was was hard. Um, Dumoulin was on the front. But you can see, based on, you know, the, the spikes and the power and et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, cadence is always pretty similar, no matter if they're in the group or on the front. Um, but you can see here that, obviously, he's, he's drafting just by the, you know, the tiny surges. Um which um, obviously did do an 800 watt surge as well. That's when Quintana um, and Roglic, they went away a little bit here. Um, it's got slightly harder. It was like 430 watts for a minute and a half, and that sort of did a bit of separation. But what was the real big one was here, where he launched out on his own. He hit 860 watts, and then, so we can go, we'll go over the attack itself, but then that attack is like, okay, yeah, it's decent, but it's not mental. He did 600 watts for 22 seconds, which is obviously very impressive and also shows that he was riding sub threshold because you can't do that attack if you're not in an already like already fucked basically if you're already um in big trouble so anyway the last 11 minutes were ridden at 453 watts which is 6.97 watts per kilo ish that is unbelievable um seven watt per kilo attack for 10 minutes at the end of this stage is something i don't think i've ever seen on any power data i've analyzed a lot um I normally, you know, you see at the end of a welter stage up a steep, sharp pinch, it's seven watts per kilo for 10 minutes. But this is actually outrageous. Seven watts per kilo for 10 and a half minutes at the end of this climb is really what makes people win the Tour de France. And this is it here. This is why when you say, why isn't Ed Laverick winning the Tour de France with 7.2 watts per kilo for 12 minutes? This is why. Because they can do close to seven watts per kilo, probably is seven watts per kilo if it's weights slightly off, you know, whatever. We're going to still call it seven watts per kilo. For 11 minutes at the end of a 25 minute effort at the end or at mid stage nine at the end of this hard stage where they've ridden over 5.6 watts per kilo on every on two major climbs before this is really like unbelievable stuff the vam is over 1700 which again is is crazy um 
and that, and this is really why the pros are the pros and everyone else is sitting at home watching the tour because this is big boy stuff like this is um numbers that i don't think will ever see you'll ever be able to see from anyone else because no gc contenders release their power data but this is like one of the highest level performances again it's like i said on twitter like i said on twitter that it it was huge um you know seven watts per kilo is no messing around and that's why when contador was saying oh, i did 7.2 over 20 everyone's like, oh, i don't think that's true and then you look at this and you're like why well, could be couldn't it i mean pagacha fresh i mean you're not putting it past him are you um but yeah so super super impressed with ride by tally pagacha um unbelievable really um the numbers that this boy is putting out and really you know this makes him a big favorite for the tour i don't know why they let him up the road roglic said that he didn't want to get yellow early but then slayed all, all his like domestiques on the front to try and split it up. So I don't really get it. Um, I think he could have gone because he seemed like, he, but maybe he couldn't. Maybe Pogaccio was the strongest. Based on this performance, though, you can see Pogaccio is in real, real top condition and is obviously a, a favourite for the tour. Um, and no one's coming close to this this KOF anytime soon. Um, then on the descent, Razdit, um 74k an hour. That's pretty quick. Um, there's a lot of GPS dodgy things, so I'm not really going to read too much into that, to be honest. Um, but if we look at the segment, it's unbelievable. Um, it, it is absolutely crazy. Um, 24 or 8, 1700 VAM. I mean, just just go to your local climb it, and just ride at 1700 VAM. I reckon you could do it for five minutes if it's steep, maybe six, seven minutes. He rode it for 24 minutes at the end of the stage. It, they're just different level. Like, the level is just absolutely bonkers. He put a minute and like 40 seconds into Bookman. Um, I mean, you can see the sort of like, I mean, it's just huge, really. There's no other way to put it out. But Richie Fort also is climbing super fast. They're all in really, really good condition. Um, but yeah, that is um, that is all I have to say today. Um, we're going to get another video about Pickcock because I love the man. Um, but yeah, absolutely bonkers. Um I've, yeah, I've never ever seen a climb performance so big as that. I thought it looked quick, you know, but you can't tell. But my oh my, that was quick. Um, and then a Porto Bars again, climbing 1500 VAM is like, you know, it's big for sure. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's all we're gonna say. We're gonna end the video here. Cheers for watching. I hope you did enjoy. Um, obviously, make sure to subscribe and like and all the rest of it. And um, we'll see you later on this evening.